Hello. Kalispera in Greek. I'm Carolina Doriti. I am a professional chef and I'm the, 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 the Athens city leader for Culinary Backstreets. Culinary Backstreets is a company that it, they cover the local food scene. We cover actually. And um, also we offer small um, group food tours in every city they work in, including Athens. Today, this is part, this is part of a new series called CB. Oh, okay, so this works now, so I can see who joins. Uh, this is part of a new series uh, called CB Cooks, where we'll be cooking um, popular dishes from cities we work in. So, we ask for the ingredients. All the ingredients you can see on the website of Culinary Backstreets. So if you go to www.culinarybackstreets.com, you'll see a list of the ingredients, but I'm gonna go through them anyway. So, today we're gonna cook dolmades, avgo lemono. Dolmades is um, basically, in, Gre in Greece, dolmades is leaves, grape leaves, cabbage leaves, lettuce leaves, sorrel, um, kale, like cyclamen leaves, rolled and stuffed with something. There are many variations of the recipe. I'm gonna go through them a bit as we cook. But the most classic ones are either the ones that are just filled with rice and herbs, as far as the grape leaves are concerned, rice and herbs, and those are eaten also cold, not just warm. And then the ones that I'm gonna cook for you, which is, we fill them with a mix of meat, minced meat, onions and herbs, and then we serve them with avro lemono, egg and lemon sauce. That's one of the most classic, traditional, loved tra uh, Greek sauces. So, May is the month of grape leaves. That's, that's, the, that's when the young grape leaves uh, grow. And that's when we pick them, especially in the first half of May, when they're very tender and young. And we preserve them for throughout the year. I'm gonna show you how we do that. So if you see here, I've already started so that we didn't have to wait. You see the difference in the color. So then I come this side. So basically what we do with the leaves is that we blanch them in boiling water. These are super fresh and super tender, so they don't require a lot of blanching. If they tend to look a bit um, uh, rougher, tougher, then you can leave them for like three minutes, four minutes, it depends. So you see the color changing. And then you have, here you have cold water. I often add ice and then from here you move the leaves here and then you, let, you bring them here to strain. So that's it. The best Grape leaves for dolmades come, of, come from a specific variety called Sultanina. This is a variety that grows a lot in Corinth. Corinth is south of Athens and also Crete. This is also a variety that is very famous to eat the grapes, the white grapes. So I'm gonna leave this here. I'm gonna transfer this. And I think you got it. So when we want to preserve these for another time, for winter, what we do is after you let them dry, I mean, these are still a bit wet, but you can get the idea. 
you make sure they're all like nice and even and then you roll them you separate them in batches let's say of 30 so that you know how many you're gonna defrost every time and then you roll it like that and I put it in a ziplock bag without air and then in the freezer and that's it and they stay fantastic and fresh forever <laughs> So, now that we're done with this, we're going to go on with the recipe. I'm gonna make a smaller um, um, dosage of this recipe that I'm gonna give you online because I've already made uh, earlier so that we have it ready. Uh, so, but I'm going to explain. So, this is beef. This is like, um, normally in my recipe I use 500 grams at least because when you're going to do something like that, you wanna make a big batch. <laughs> These, they really, everybody loves them. So when you make like a, a you know, like a, a casserole full of these, they just disappear in no time. So uh, this is minced beef. A lot of people do a mix of beef and pork, half beef, half pork. I have to say it's also really tasty, but it's up to everybody's, you know, choice. So this is red onion. So this is like one red onion, small, for this, well, you want one large red onion actually for the, for the amount of meat that I give in the recipe you're gonna read. And, and this is a one chopped spring onion. So I'm gonna give, give you the amounts of the normal recipe. And uh, I put 80 grams of rice. This is a rice that in Greece we call Carolina, like me. <laughs> it's, a, it's a short grain white rice. And it's, we also use it, they, people also use this for risotto. So you can use a risotto rice if you can't find something like that. And then herbs. Herbs are super important in this recipe. And I write three tablespoons for the normal recipe. But I wanna show you what I mean with a tablespoon. What is my tablespoon of herbs? Like this is my one tablespoon of herbs. <laughs> so I'm gonna put half now. I mean, this, re this recipe really depends on um, all of these fresh herbs and the onions to give it flavor. And mint, chopped mint. You must use mint. Like if you're not gonna use all the herbs, you can um, leave the dill for this recipe and use parsley and mint, but mint is a must. So you've got this and then you wanna put salt, pepper and I'm gonna use half the olive oil so I normally use in my recipe 160 milliliters of olive oil but this is half so yeah so um, I have for 160 milliliters of olive oil for the whole recipe in the mix you put half so it means you put 80 um, milliliters so you need and I'm gonna tell you now when I was younger and I was like you know learning all the traditional recipes I was asking my grandmothers my mom you know m mothers of friends grandmothers of friends I remember my grandmother who made great dolmades all the time for me especially because I used to love them so 
when she was trying to explain to me how to make dolmadas, especially the ones with just the rice and the herbs, you know, women of, of that generation, they didn't count everything the way we do now with grams and, you know, so they cooked by the eye, that's how we call it. And she was like trying to give me directions from over the phone, you know, how to make the dolmada. And she, and she was like, is it green enough? Is it green enough? Is the rice green enough? You shouldn't see the white part. <laughs> So that's a trick I always remember when I make recipes like that, that they shouldn't look uh, white or you shouldn't, like the meat should not show here. Should, you know, you should see the onions and the herbs. So I have to say something here because I'm into, I'm, I'm a food history geek. <laughs> so dolmades is a very ancient thing. It wasn't called dolmades. Dolmades were, were called in Greece after the Ottoman occupation that a lot of uh, a lot of traditional dishes that we had changed names uh, throughout the years. So dolmades were, co were called thries. And um, the, the ancient uh, Greeks used to make this using the young leaves of the of the figs, the fig trees. The very young leaves of fig trees. So they used to make it very similar. They used to blanch them and preserve them for throughout the year. Okay, they didn't use beef, they didn't use rice. They didn't have these things in the very ancient times. I mean, beef they had, but they didn't use it that much. But uh, they used uh, wheat and they used pulses. Until today, we find variations of these recipes on some islands, like for example, the island of Sydney. It's a tiny island. And they make those uh, dolmades with the cyclamen leaves, you know, the flower leaves. And they fill them with fava. Fava is not the fava bean that you know, it's yellow split peas. It's very traditional in Greece since the ancient times. <laughs> um, so, you know, it's another variation. And then you know, then you go, I mean, there are so many different ways to make this. On the island of Kassos, Kassos again is a tiny island with a fantastic cuisine. You never expect that such a small island with so small population can have such an interesting, you know, cuisine of its own. I think their dolmades are probably among the most famous dolmades in Greece, Kassiotiki, Kassos, dolmades, and they're like tiny. They make these at all the weddings and the big festivals and, and you know, that everybody gathers together. And they're very small, so they take, I'm gonna show you now. They take each, leaf, each grape leaf and they cut it in three. And then they roll the dolmades. So you can imagine they're like super tiny. And they put meat, minced meat inside and rice and they grate tomato, but they don't serve it with egg and lemon sauce. So this is ready. And I'm gonna wash my hands for just a second. So now this is the best part. I don't know, it's my meditation at least, I love it. So you have to be very careful with the leaves, not to tear them, you know. And you spread them out and the side of the stem, I don't know, I call them veins, should be facing you. I think the vine is one of the most magic plants and gifts of Mother Earth to humanity. You know, I mean, a part of the obvious, you know, the wine and all the, you know, the other alcoholic drinks they make. You know, we use the leaves, we use, we have the grape molasses, we use the grape mast, which is the unfiltered grape juice, uh, you know, before it ferments. Uh, to become wine, uh, we use we use the branches in Greek in Greece klimatover yes, we use them. Th these are the branches, and we use them to to cook meat. 
basically like lamb on top of these or, or pork and they get all the aromas of the branches um, during this time of the year that the, the young leaves grow we also they also grow like the tips like round um, spiral tips um, that a bell of last that I would call them and we pickle these we use them in salads you can fry them raisins of course come out of this oops I just tore it so you need torn leaves I will explain why so you put them on the side Also, this is a food that I know a lot of people, you know, are, are intimidated uh, to make, even in Greece, you know. Um, but it's it's not as difficult as it looks like. It just has a lot of prep, you know. You need to chop all the herbs and all that, but and then roll them. Well, that's torn. Okay, so I'm gonna start and I'm gonna show you how we do it. I'm gonna throw this. So first of all, I'm gonna use all the torn leaves to lay on the bottom of the, of, of the saucepan. This is to, you know, to protect your actual dolmades from burning, you know. Ah, see, this is part of the tips that I was telling you about. That we use Abelo Corfades. <laughs> Just as, as part of it. So we need to find. Okay, for you that, of course, I, I know that in many countries it's not very easy to find these. Uh, so, you can always use the leaves that are preserved in a jar. Sorry, somebody asked to go live with us. What? I'm, I don't know how this works. See? Ποιος? Δεν θέλω να πω το όνομα, mm. αλλά δεν ξέρω αν θα πρέπει να μιλήσει. Ας το δεν ξέρω. So. so now, I don't know if you want to come closer so that they can see how I'm doing this. One teaspoon of minced meat mix. You put them here. You put it here towards the center, and then you do this, and then you roll. It's like a spring roll in a way. Oh, and then you have to watch this. So in in here, I'm gonna put them in a spiral shape. because this helps it from, I mean, keeps it from opening, you know, and, and staying nicely squeezed, keeping their shape well. So some leaves are smaller, some are bigger, you know, you can adjust the amount of filling you put in each. During winter, traditionally, we make this with cabbage leaves. Also very tasty, more wintery. I mean, you can find dolmades, like 
dishes like that wrapped in leaves you can find in other countries uh, like uh, the Middle East, uh, Turkey, uh, the Balkan countries, Russia. But they're so tasty. And the ones that have just rice and herbs that we eat them cold, you know, usually people make a lot of them and they keep them in the fridge and just pop them in like candies. So I opened a bottle of wine to drink a bit with Tenya and I'm going to talk to you about the wine. It's a wine that really pairs really well with um, Avro Lemon also. It's not an easy sauce to be paired with wine as it's like based on uh, eggs and a lot of lemon. Grape leaves have a unique aroma. Um, I'm gonna give you a tip now, especially for those of you that are watching and they are in countries that they can only find the jarred grape leaves. So avoid buying um, grape leaves that are very dark green in color. They shouldn't be. The lighter they are, like the more close to this color they are, the better quality. Question, can, can you freeze the rolls too? Yes, you can, oh, the rolls. I'm sorry, but I've never frozen them because they just disappear every time I make them. You know, there's not enough. It's like if you drink your wine, you can't age it. You know, if you eat your food, you gotta freeze it. <laughs> I bet they would be okay if you froze them, but I don't know, rice. I like eating fresh foods. So. But, but of course you can throw, freeze them because I just remembered that in Greece they sell frozen ones ready, so you can freeze them. But as you can tell, I've never bought them. <laughs> but it's fun, you know, it's, I, I, I find it really fun to wait for its season and buy whatever is fresh that season and you know work with this with with these ingredients and you know uh, also i get very bored to cook with the same stuff all the time so that's why nature is so wise to offer us different ingredients at different times of the year so we can anticipate for those dishes too you know it's, they taste better And that's why I'm very strict with seasons. You know, I try not to use ingredients that are not seasonal at all. So, 
while I keep rolling here, I'm gonna bring the wine from the fridge to show you what we're drinking. So this is Acirtico Santorini. It's a fantastic Acirtico. Acirtico is a PDO wine from Santorini. They also produce it in other parts of Greece, of course, and most uh, Cycladic islands make it also. Uh, but the Santorini Acirtico is the PDO Acirtico. Okay, PDO. For people from the States, they might not know what it is. So in Europe, we have a law to protect uh, products that are very famous or very, you know, um, they have a long history. Like, for example, champagne in France and Parmesan in Italy and feta cheese in Greece. And I mean, we have a, ha a lot of products that are PDO in Greece, like really a lot. I cannot remember now the number, but the wines are over 20 PDO wines of Greece. Uh, I was writing an article about this like a while ago. Um, so this is one of the wines that tastes fantastic with Avrolemono. The other wine that tastes fantastic with Avrolemono is Retzina. And I have to say that it has nothing to do with the Retzina of the 70s, <laughs> the New Age Retzina. It's much more sophisticated. You can read about it in the website of Culinary Backstreet. Great question. Yes. If I don't want to roll, can I put two layers of leaves then no. inside? No. Then again on no. top? <laughs> Make another dish. <laughs> but <laughs> what you can do is, uh, because, you know, what will happen if you use two leaves here, it's going to make it very tough, you know, and you're not going to feel much of the filling. And they're going to open. No, don't do this. But grape leaves and generally leaves are used also for other stuff too. For example, you can wrap a fish or a big fish and you can wrap it all around with leaves. That's much faster. Also, you can do like, for example, I do a recipe with um, lamb. So I use lamb and I stuff it and then I, I roll it all like the whole thing with grape leaves all around and then I roast it. Or you can yeah, you can basically use it as a leaf to grill something that you want to protect and keep it juicy and give it a flavor. Is, is there another question? Not yet. Yes, I can see here the trout wrapped in grape leaves. Yes, fantastic. Also, like when you cook this, it's nice to use a dry mineral wine you can cook the fish with a wine like this, although it's expensive, <laughs> but it's uh, nice. <laughs> so, I'm going to talk about Acirtico. Acirtico, okay, first of all, Santorini uh, is one of the most ancient uh, terro terroirs of Europe that have never been in. in you know, the, the, it was never infe infected by the phylloxera disease. That was a disease that really killed almost all the vines around Europe. But um, the ones that were near volcanic, um, you know, soil or old lakes that were more like clay soil, they were saved. So in Greeks, actually, we have um, certain varieties that were really saved. also in Aminde or Northern Greece, but they're very famous for other types of wines, even though they make Acertico too. So Acertico, okay, Sandorini has a volcanic soil and it has a microclimate, so it goes really humid at night and during the day, in the summer when the grapes grow, it's really windy and very sunny and hot. They're like under the sun, it's hot, but it's extremely windy. So they have a very ancient method of growing the vines. 
and they shape them, shape them like a, a round, like a red. And this is because as the leaves grow around the red, the grapes, the actual fruit is protected under the leaves from the strong sun and the wind. Also, these grapes are never watered. And that's why the wines are so unique. The vines, they don't water them because of the microclimate and also because those islands were traditionally extremely, extremely dry islands. So what happens is at night when it goes very humid, they, the soil um, gets all the water from the humidity, you know, from the, from the environment and, and stores it. In the in in you know it stores in the soil, so throughout the day, they you know that that's how the plant is fed with water. Those um, grapes and not just the grapes, like in the in the Cycladic Islands, the same group of islands as Santorini and Mykonos, because they were always very dry islands. They produced. Um, vegetables and fruit, watermelons that were called anhydra. Are, they're still produced, anhydra. Anhydra means without water. These are, I swear, the tastiest vegetable ever. Like the tastiest tomatoes, the tastiest watermelons. Can you do the same recipe with garbage leaves? Yes, it's traditional during winter. You can make this recipe um, with lettuce, with kale, with um, uh, sorrel, with um, um, chard. I mean, this part is a bit time consuming, but I'm gonna stop soon. Mm. I'm gonna go back to the wine, because <laughs> uh, it's very, it's a very mineral wine, also because of the of the of the very unique soil of Sandorini. I'm traveling you to the Greek islands, which I dream of every day. Okay, so. Come here. When you when you finish the first layer, then you go on top. Again, the same style, spiral. Also, in more like contemporary Greek cuisines, we use the leaves in many other ways. <laughs> also, we use them um, like to make a pesto, which is very interesting. It has a very unique flavor. As you can imagine, all day I've been rolling dolmades. <laughs> it's good. That, it's good that I love doing it. Also, it's. Um, I'm being featured in the newsletter of Culinary Bank Streets this week, and Emma sent me an email last night. Emma is the chief editor. And she was asking me some questions to answer, you know, and she was like, what memories does this 
they spring you. And I'm like, oh my God, you know, this is just memories. Like all these dishes that are traditional and you have, you know, grown up with are full of memories. Maybe that's why, maybe that's why I love them. Maybe you'll eat it and you'll think it's awful. <laughs> No, no way. Super tasty. And it's also very, you know, it's... I mean, what is it about the Mediterranean diet that makes it so healthy? It's like we use a lot of vegetable, like a lot. And traditionally, even though we do it nowadays, like, but traditionally we never cooked really meat with potatoes or you know things like that it's like meat with a lot of vegetables artichokes beans fresh beans i mean okra grape leaves like wild greens okay i'm done and one more. So, I mean, this is like half, uh, half done. You'd never make such a small uh, portion of, you know, of this recipe ever, but it's okay. I just want you to get an idea and I'm going to show you how the red one is. Is the taste different? If you roll them uh, shorter or longer or thinner? No, the taste is not different. It's just important to roll them tight so that they keep their shape. And they don't just open and then everything is spread out. So, I'm going to explain here how you would do it normally. So, come close. So here I had all the layers. And then what you do is you pour in here the rest of the olive oil. You pour the lemon juice. This is like 25 uh, milliliters. And you want to use a plate like I've used here but the plate has um, two reasons that we use it first of all it puts pressure on them so they don't expand you know because their rice also expands so they keep their shape and everything as well but also once this is ready you want all the liquid from here so the plate keeps everything in its place to pour the liquid. Okay. So, now you can remove it oh, with something else. I always think I'm Superman as far as the heat is concerned. Okay, come close. Oh, fantastic, they look great. So, well, this plate is too big for this. Wait, I'm gonna bring a smaller. Okay, 
Okay, so now you place a plate on top to keep everything in place and you have to pour warm water so you pour 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 until it covers the plate it just covers it you don't want to put too much water okay so about there because this liquid is very important you need it for the sauce so you have to make sure you're gonna have like um, this is 500 milliliters it's like more than enough it's half a liter so after you do this oh sorry i forgot you have to season with some salt and pepper and then you put the plate and then you cover with a lid and you're gonna cook it. So you first put it at medium high heat because you want it to start simmering. The moment it starts simmering, you bring down the heat to medium low and you cook like that. You simmer it for like 20 minutes and then you bring it even more down and you simmer it for another 20 minutes. So more or less it needs about 40 minutes of simmering and then it's like this so they smell fantastic I love this <laughs> <laughs> I can't speak I'm drooling <laughs> so let's say uh, have a drink before I start the abogol lemon <laughs> chin chin llamas llamas it's fantastic Mm. Okay, so for the Afgo lemon, the egg and lemon sauce, which is traditionally used not just in dolmades, but only in dolmades with meat actually, uh, but also you put it in soups like chicken soup with Afgo lemon is to die for, fish soup. Uh, we use it in fricassee, like a, um, a traditional recipe where we cook um, meat, like it can, be, it can be lamb, it can be goat, it can be anything actually, like chicken. And you cook it with greens, lots of greens, lots of spring onions, lots of herbs, and then you serve it with egg and lemon sauce. It's fantastic. Hundreds of dishes. For me, whatever has a lemon, no? Avro is egg, lemon is lemon. Uh, it's fantastic. <laughs> so, you need two eggs at room temperature. It's very important. It's going to be much more successful. Um, lemon juice. So, for two eggs, I use about, uh, I use the, the juice of uh, one and a half lemon. Okay, and this is cornstarch. So I'm gonna tell you about that. If you are going to make the avgo lemon and you're not planning to reheat this, you don't need to use this at all. You just use the eggs and the lemon and the liquid from the food. If you're going to reheat it, then you need to add this so that the sauce keeps well. And other people use flour, other people use a lot of this and it becomes really thick and it looks like a bechamel almost, you know. Um, I use very little and you don't really understand, I've used it. <laughs> so, what do you do? Because uh, I'm going to put it on the stove later, I'm going to break the yolks in here. So you separate the eggs. Whites go in one bowl and the yolks go in another bowl. I'm gonna 
do it with an electric whisk now. Okay, I have to show you this. Like traditionally, like the older generations, when they were making angolemono by hand, you know, using the whisk or a fork, they used to do. <laughs> or he. I think like to focus. I don't know. <laughs> so they gave kisses to the to the to the egg whites. Not, you can turn it on. So you want to do like a light marine. That's about enough. See, so it's like a meringue, but it's it's light. It's not too much. And now the yolks. And now, what I'm gonna do? is I'm going to mix the cornstarch and the lemon juice. So you see, it's like no lumps in here. It's like great. And I put it in the egg yolks. And now, what I'm going to do, I'm, I'm going to get rid of this now. Toast them. I'm going to use the traditional one. So. You slowly add the whites and you and you stir. See how light it is? Please, look, this is how our lemon should be. <laughs> so now, remember, this has some salt and pepper, okay? But you will need to adjust, uh, of course, at some point, uh, the seasoning. But now this is like the most important part. So you're gonna start pouring some of this liquid in here. I'm gonna give it a stir because all the oil is up. Okay, while you stir. Because you want to keep the eggs from, you know, go, uh, scrambling. Now I'm gonna put it on the heat, on low heat. So I'm 
gonna use a little bit more of this. I usually, for two eggs, I usually use around 250 milliliters of this liquid. When you go to the website, um, www.culinarypacks.com and you go to the Athens part, you know, and you find the recipe, um, you'll see all the measurements will be converted because I'm, I'm metric, so it's very confusing for me to use any other. Can you come close? Because this is important, not me. <laughs> Good. I want to show how it looks. You have to keep staring while you do this. And send kisses. Hmm? And send kisses. Yes. Well, the kisses uh, are in the beginning when you beat the white. It's like... Okay, that's about enough. But you want to keep it here a bit because you want to wait for it to thicken just slightly and I'm gonna taste it just a bit to see if it needs any more salt or pepper fresh pepper, black pepper, super thick, I like it frothy and light, so this is enough for me, you can show it. If you want it thicker, you just let it longer here while you stir. And I'm gonna show you now how we, how we put it there. So, switch off the heat. I'm bringing that here. I'm gonna pour this in. You wanna come close, I think you should. Okay, <laughs> fantastic. Oh my god. <laughs> yes. <laughs> and you close it and Because you cannot stare the dog mothers, you're gonna ruin them. Hmm. I'm giving you all the insider's secrets here. Okay, and ready. This is Dolmades Abgolemono. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> so, Wait, I'm going to bring it here. And I'm going to serve some to offer to Dania, first of all, who's been waiting for them all day. How many do you want? <laughs> 20. 20. 
That's why they're never enough. I'm yeah. okay. Come on. Huh? I'm okay. Okay. Is there any bread? Yes. <laughs> okay, this is a dish that requires bread because after you eat the dolmades, you need this to finish off the avgolemono sauce that is in your plate. Yeah, <laughs> mas. Very hot, I think. So, do you have any questions now that I'm uh, I'm done with all the hard work? Are there any questions? Because this one is delayed. Not really. Okay. Yeah, like Calyorexy. Thank you. Looks great. It, so, it does look great. I mean, this this is in my heart since I was a child, so I love it. That's why I can assure you I make it well. <laughs> so, oh my God, it's very hot. Oh, yeah. Mmm. <laughs> For the people that have eaten dolmades outside of Greece, preferably, and they say they don't like them, please make this recipe and think about it again. <laughs> Could you identify the vineyard, vineyard of the Assyrtiko? Sorry? Can you identify? This comes from Santo. Santo is like the... the how, could, how do I say it's the... It's the of the co-op of Santorini. Um, but you can check them online, Santo. Santo Wines, S-A-N-T-O. And a bit more wine, because it goes great with this, fantastic food. Yamas. Lots of love from Athens. See you again soon. I have to cook something else. <laughs> Bye.